Hello guys, in today's video, we're going to talk about how to use one-to-one -one relation in Next.js project with Prisma. One-to-one -one relation is very similar to one-to-many. As a matter of fact, what makes it one-to-one -one instead of one-to-many is the uniqueness of the foreign key on the foreign key side of the relation. Let's go ahead and take a look at it so it makes more sense. Let's create another model called a profile. We're going to have uh, ID integer auto increment, right? Uh, it's going to be primary key. We're going to put a user ID, which will be unique. And that's kind of the difference between one to one and one to many. Uh, we're going to have a bio, which will be text and created it and updated it. And we will also define a user field that will be on a Prisma and it will be a type of user and it will have a relation. It will have a user ID, right? And we have user ID right here as a unique and it will reference ID on the user right over here. Also, we are using on delete cascade referential action because when I delete a user, I don't want an orphan profile floating around. The profile should be also deleted and the database can take care of it for me. So let's go ahead and finish writing our model and we will call the table profiles as, as soon as we finish writing the model. Prisma's plugin gives us a hint that, uh, you know, we need to define a relation, corresponding relation on a user. So actually, if we go ahead and save it, VS Code Prisma plugin does it for us. You see, it added an optional profile relation here because user may have profile or may not have a profile. Now let's go to the seeder in seed.mgs file and let's go ahead and update it. So it also creates a profile when it creates a user. Right here, before the posts, we can put a profile. We're going to be using create and then bio and we're going to use faker dot paragraph for paragraphs and we'll put one and that's it let's go ahead and save it now let's go ahead and copy here and we'll scroll down because we're creating two users so we're going to have the same thing on the second user. Our seeder creates two users. I know there's duplication here, but you can refactor so it looks a little bit better. Now let's go ahead and create and run migrations in the seeders. Earlier in the videos, I created a couple of scripts in uh, package.json, right? There is a migration create where it uses Prisma migrate dev create only. Migrate, it just does Prisma migrate dev, and the seed is basically calling the seed.mjs file. Let's go ahead in the terminal, do npm run uh, migration create. And it's going to ask us for the name of the migration. We're going to put create profiles table. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, migrate npm run migrate. And we have a successful migration. Let's go ahead and do npm run seed. And it tells us uh, faker paragraphs is not a function. Oops. All right, let's go ahead and fix it. Let's go back to seed.mgs and where we have faker paragraphs, it should be actually faker lorem dot paragraphs. And then let's go ahead and fix it in the second place. And that's where non-dry code can bite you here. So let's go ahead and put lorem as well. All right, let's save it. Let's go ahead and run our seeder again. NPM run seed. And it looks like we ran into another issue. There is unknown argument profile. Let's uh, take a look at that. And it looks like uh, VS Code's Prisma plugin kind of messed us up here because our convention is to call all the fields in the model with a lowercase or columns in the table with a lowercase. And here it auto inserted us uh, the profile with a capital P. So let's go and put it with a lowercase p and save it again. Let's go ahead, clear. And the third time is a charm, hopefully. NPM run seed. Well, apparently not. It's still complaining about the profile and what we forgot to do is actually run Prisma generate and that's where you need to generate uh, your Prisma if you update models. But when you run migrations, it's kind of done it for you automatically. 
But here we need to do it manually. So let's go ahead and clear and do npx prisma generate. Let's go ahead and do seed again, npm run seed. And we're finally done. Yay. Now let's go ahead and update our types here. So we're going to go to types.d.ts file. This file is in SRC folder. All right, let's go ahead and open it and let's create a profile type. Let's go ahead and do type profile, ID number, user ID number, bio stream, created at date and optional updated at date. And also let's go ahead and put a profile uh, property right here, profile on the user, right? It's also going to be optional. That will be type of profile. It seems like we are duplicating what we did in Prisma schema, right? Because we define profile and Prisma schema and profile property or field on the user model. However, if we return Prisma model type out of repository, it will defeat the purpose of the repository because it will be tightly coupled to Prisma model. And if we decide to swap out Prisma for SQLize, for example, we'll have to redefine the types. So here from the repositories, we're returning types defined by us. So in case we use a different ORM or access to database differently, we'll just make sure our uh, repository returns us these specific fields. All right, let's now go to the app and we go to single user route. So it's going to be in users ID page.tsx. First, we're going to include profile and the options that we're passing to uh, user repository get by ID method. So we're going to put profile true. Now we would like to display a bio on a single user page. So right here under H2 tag, right? Let's uh, put the following. We're going to put another paragraph. We'll give it a little margin and we'll call it bio. And we're going to check if there is a user profile. And then we're going to display uh, profile.bio. And then if there is no profile, right, we're going to be displaying and slash a not available. Let's save changes. And now let's do the exciting part to check if our relation actually works, right? Let's go ahead and uh, run npm, run dev. And let's go to localhost 3000. And we have our next JS application running. Let's click on users. And we have the list of users. As we know, uh, we are ordering the users by created at descending. So if we go to um, all the users, right, right here, we click on Ruben here, and we can see that the bio, right, we're showing, but we have NA because we don't have profile for that user because it was created earlier. Now let's go ahead to more recent users. So there are two of them were created. So Drew, let's go ahead and click on Drew and we have a bio right here. And then if we go back, we can click on SE and uh, SE also has a bio. And it looks like our one-to-one -one relation is working. Let's go back to VS Code and talk about optional one-to-one -one relation. In order to do optional one-to-one -one relation, it's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is to put the question marks right next to the type. So you can put a type question mark right here and user ID. Also you put a question mark making those fields optional. You make them optional on the foreign key side of the relation, and that's how you get optional one-to-one -one relation. Unlike a one-to-many relation, you can actually choose a side or a model where foreign key relation can reside, right? Here we decided to put it on a profile. However, you could have done it on the user side, right? You would have put a profile ID. ID, right? You would put it as an integer and then and here you would have redefined at a relation, right? Where you would have said that uh, it uses profile ID, right? And references ID on the profile. And obviously you wouldn't have uh, this field right here. And this would have been like optional here without the relation annotation. So when designing one-to-one -one relation, think which side makes more sense to put a foreign key on. Well, and that's the basic of one-to-one -one relation in Prisma. If you would like to continue exploring Prisma relations in Next.js project, please check out this video on many-to-many -many relation. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.